Hey everyone, it's me, Kenzie Taylor, and it is time to get saucy. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the sauce. Hi, my name is Maya Wolf, and you're watching The Sauce with Kenzie Taylor. New episodes released every Tuesday. So while she was pulling her head off of the cock, she projectile vomited all over, and it went literally like... <laughs> It went all over my lap, <laughs> like literally all over my entire lap. <laughs> the smell of it was horrendous. So that <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Sauce Podcast with Kenzie Taylor. Today my guest is adult film star Maya Wolf. Hello. Hi Maya. <laughs> Hi. She looks so beautiful for the audio listeners. <laughs> she has these amazing, are those, is that real leather, your pants? These are actually PVC. Love that. Yeah. Are they comfortable? They are actually. The inside of them is pretty like smooth. They're made by Topshop, which is like a nicer brand. So they did a really good job making these. Love that. You always look so fancy. Thank you. You're I very try. stylish. <laughs> I love fashion. I'm over here like meh. <laughs> 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 so Maya, you are an adult film star. Mm -hmm. When exactly did you start in the industry? Um, it's been like two and a half years or so now. It was August of 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you started basically like... When everything started. COVID like times. Back up again, when, yeah. yeah, when things were opening back up. So mm -hmm. honestly, that was probably really weird time to start because everybody's yeah. freaking out and yeah. not knowing what... <laughs> what did you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, I didn't really know anything different other than True. that, you know? So like, yeah. I didn't know what it was like before, but yeah. it was definitely not an ideal time to join but i don't really think there ever is a good time to like get into porn. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like you either are in or not yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i agree um i will say from a person that was in it prior it's it was a lot more laid back i guess per se yeah. but the thing that i did like that changed once covid hit was they got more strict with um cleanliness mm -hmm. i feel like lately that's kind of been important it it's kind of like forgotten about lately a little oh, bit no. at some locations but then again oh. you can't really control like house owners and cleaning their houses and stuff yeah. for anyone who doesn't know we run out different homes <laughs> for <laughs> for our shoot locations a lot other than just studios and stuff so that's what i mean when i say the homeowners people at first i was like really why yeah. <laughs> i was like who's dirty Tell me. <laughs> yeah. i know it's crazy i'm just like oh. i remember one time i took a shower at um a house oh, I, I won't say the house because <laughs> it's a very popular house yeah. but i took a shower and I, I just got done working and it was like a really rough scene so i'm like okay i just want to wash decompress for yeah. a second and wash all this jizz out of my hair <laughs> so i'm showering and like I'm not even joking. Probably a hundred ants came crawling out of the shower nozzle once I turned it on. <laughs> it was so gross. And I didn't want to be like weird and like scream and freak people out. Yeah. So I kind of like covered my mouth and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, if it's at all an option to not shower at a shoot house or a studio that is um <laughs> that's my choice that's See, what i would prefer i've heard that a lot and i've also heard a lot of people being like oh i took a baby bird bath which meaning like, like a, they'll a use a bath with baby yeah <laughs> yeah they'll use like either the sink and like spritz themselves yeah. and or they'll use like baby wipes i'm just really weird and even if mm -hmm. it's like a dirty location i'm like yeah. I just want to rinse off my body and then I'll I shower again when I get home. See, I just want to do it like as soon as I get home because I like just I don't know. I don't trust how cleanly <laughs> the area is. Yeah, yeah. Here. I'm like, mm. <laughs> if I like brought like slides or something with me, maybe I'll shower in those. But like yeah. specifically, my like I don't want to be naked in those. Like I'm already <laughs> definitely. I totally I've already get touched that. a lot of probably questionable things for the day. Yeah, like the one thing that's supposed to be clean, I don't want that to also be kind of disgusting yeah no, <laughs> i totally get that for sure uh other, apart from the cleanliness i uh -huh. feel like the other thing that has changed um since before you entered is the fact of um people care a lot more if they're feeling sick they'll cancel mm -hmm. work right away rather yeah. than 
I've, you know, I've been to set at times when people will show up really sick and they still work, yeah, still get paid, still leave. Yeah. And I don't like that. That's it's, not cool. Cause no. Like, you know. You're not going to give your all when you're sick like that. You're not going to be yeah. able to give 100%. And really also. That, but like we, we swap spit. Yeah. You know? And you're getting like everyone else on set. To the people you're working exactly. with. Exactly. Like that's fucked up. Exactly. Know? So Our I feel like. Our bodies are commodities. So like if you get exactly. someone sick, you're like ruining their opportunities to my make My body is my art of work. <laughs> work of art. Yeah. But um, yeah. So that's a very interesting time to enter. So what was your first pro scene that you ever did? My first pro scene was actually really fun. It was a girl girl scene with me and Vanessa Skye oh, and Quasar. Yeah, she's so hot. She's actually going to be here later today if oh, you really? want to stick by I and love that. maybe we'll have some fun. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, and it was with Quasar, which, like, he's one of the easiest hilarious. People to shout, shout out to ever. Mike Quasar. <laughs> I've shouted you out on here so many times, but he's hilarious. So we just, like, poured oil on each other and like rubbed each other and laughed and like looked hot by the hot tub and then just went inside and fucked and that was it <laughs> did you get to have sex on a bed it was a couch okay yeah still a soft material yeah. that's so nice mm -hmm. yeah and then my next one was like my next one was also on a couch i'm pretty sure yeah yeah that's nice <laughs> but that's awesome that you got that for your first scene yeah and you got quasar because i remember too my first scene he directed as well oh, yeah. and i had a boy girl mm -hmm. And it was on a bed as well. So not only did I have Quasar direct my first scene as well, I also got to have sex on a soft surface, yeah. which for anyone who does not know, <laughs> we, we do not get to pick the areas that we fornicate in. <laughs> Believe me, we wish that we could, but yeah. What's the, speaking of weird foreign areas, where is the weirdest place that you have ever had sex? Like on set? Or? On set and off set. Um, offset is going to be like on the top of a water tower. That's dope. <laughs> I'm jealous. I, yeah, that, that, that's a funny story. Actually, I ended up getting like detained that night. What? <laughs> Let's hear this story. <laughs> so I was a bad I shouldn't say that. Um, I was bad when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad, bad girl. I was going to say I was a bad kid, but yeah. I was like, oh, we shouldn't talk about me and having sex as a kid. Um, I was... <laughs> You're about adolescent. I was bad when I was younger, and mm. I left my house when I shouldn't have, and my ex-boyfriend picked me up, and we... I lived in a small town, so we like went to the top of this water tower, and we're like... Watching the stars. Where are you in from? Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Like northern Arizona. Okay. Um, so yeah, then we like fucked up there and then we went down to his car and his car was apparently parked illegally. So the cops were there. It was bad. Were you guys naked? No, we oh, were okay. dressed because we had came, we had like come down from the tower like we were getting ready to leave. Um, was that your first time up on top of a water tower? Or was that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Was that like a plan? Like, hey, we're going to go no. fuck up there. I mean, I didn't think we were going to fuck <laughs> up there, but like we were dating, you know, and like we fucked a lot. So yeah. kind of like it just made sense. <laughs> I want to fuck on a water tower. <laughs> I feel like now you'd totally get arrested like instantly. But probably yeah. who knows, though? It was like dark, though. Like it was late at night. Like there was no one around. So do you like uh, like risky situations like that? I like public things. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of like uh, photos in downtown LA where I'm like fully nude. And there's like tons of people. Uh, actually, we shot a lot of them during the pandemic. So they're, I, I'm like a big person on consent. Yeah. Like, I, you know, if someone isn't looking to see me naked, like I'm not trying to show them my naked body. Yes. Um. So I yeah. really respect that a lot. Thank you. I'm kind of the same way. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I've kind of like pulled my boobs out in <laughs> random places and like. <laughs> Hey, you like this? <laughs> but for the most part, uh, you know, I think of like being around, you know, if there's like families and children and if I'm at like a theme park or something, I yeah. don't want to wear, you know, a white shirt with no bra and my nipples are just showing. Some people don't care, but stuff like that. So I respect that. Yeah, but I, I do have pictures of me fully like head to toe nude in like Pershing Square and in front of like the... 
I think it's town hall. Love that. <laughs> other places Love too, that for like, town hall. <laughs> what a great, downtown. that should be like on a pamphlet, like <laughs> town really hall. Fun. Welcome to the town. <laughs> and the town hall is actually like really phallic shaped, which is hilarious. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen it, mm -hmm. but like the bottom of the building is like really long. And then like the middle of it. <laughs> Basically like a cock almost. <laughs> like a drink, yeah. <laughs> You're like, this is fitting. <laughs> So, uh, what is the riskiest place, or uh, I guess not riskiest, but strangest Plus, place, obnoxious place that you've had sex on film? Um, or just a, it doesn't even have to be like obnoxious, just a place where you're like, I didn't think I could have sex there, but we did it. I'm trying to think. I mean, I had sex in the desert when it was really hot. Um, but that's, that's brutal. <laughs> I've done that. That's brutal. We were in like, it was like a, a western film too uh -huh. so we were in like, i had like four layers of shit on oh my god <laughs> i felt really bad That's for my brutal. motel because it's hot as fuck and like they had to like keep their dick up and shit and i was like oh this is rough <laughs> like my pussy yeah. gets dry or i'm not feeling good i just like throw some lube on there if but. anything <laughs> i don't think it's gonna get dry i think it's gonna be very moist because of all the layers <laughs> and all the <laughs> sweating i had like bloomers <laughs> and like a fucking like is it a petticoat? The thing it's that, something, like, adds, yeah. Like, yeah. Volume and then like another skirt and then like a corset and. Isn't that crazy? They used to dress like that. Yeah. I seen that when um. So <laughs> London's one of my favorite places. Well, mm -hmm. it is my favorite place, yeah. but it's uh, such an amazing place, full of so much history. But if you go in, into different places there, like um some of the like castles or um even the tower of london they have like jewelry or they'll have like clothing of mm -hmm. what they used to wear yeah. you know when like the queen was younger or even before her and they would they would wear those big like cage things uh, basically like yeah. uh, so heavy probably like 20 pounds the corsets that they would wear were so tight <laughs> that um it was stated that some girls would even um end up having their ribs like cave in and that's yeah. just how they lived that's insane. Yeah. But it's just the thought of that, I'm like, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's disturbing. I'm very claustrophobic. I'd be like, <laughs> get me out of here. I'm like, I need to be comfortable in my clothes. Like, I can't, like, I can yeah. never imagine that. <laughs> like, I don't even wear, sh like, heels 90% of the time because I'm like, mm. What What is your normal, like, go-to outfit when um, you're not stylish as hell? <laughs> sweatpants, for sure. Tennis shoes and, like either a really small tank top kind of like this or like a really baggy sweatshirt or both like one on top of the other <laughs> love that i like yeah i love to be comfortable what do you say i love to be comfortable so i love that you're like that too because yeah. a lot of people are like i love to wear heels and dresses mm -hmm. and i'm like ah <laughs> ah Today i can't I was like can i wear sweatpants <laughs> so yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. wear some pants <laughs> yeah you're like ah, I'm, I'm gonna just be comfortable <laughs> um so what is the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in the last i guess three years now of being in film um i mean it probably has to do with like vomit or shit or something <laughs> like that's okay people people like to hear it, but if you don't want to share you don't have to i had a content trade that i was supposed to shoot and the male talent kind of had to push it back and i was like okay that's fine like your scene's going like no worries um but i got really hungry <laughs> <laughs> and so i went to this nice italian restaurant <laughs> down the street from my hotel and yeah that was, <laughs> I, he was like face fucking me and then just all of a sudden like my my pasta was just your pasta was <laughs> i think it was also everywhere. the wine that i had too because i like had a nice glass Ooh, of wine with it and i yeah. think that was just like yeah <laughs> and i was like oh i'm so sorry and i honestly think he was kind of like a little bit into it but i was like no, no, no. Like, <laughs> you're like i'm not go no. go clean up i'm not going to continue to suck your penis oh, okay so you were done you were like i'm done i mean we yeah. we kept going after he went and cleaned it up but i wasn't gonna like continue to like suck up my vomit up <laughs> that makes me think of a time i did this scene i'm not gonna we, we're not naming names here um <laughs> i did a i did a uh double bj scene with a girl mm -hmm. And the certain um, performer loves very sloppy, v a deep throat as much as possible, mm -hmm. like just gagging, um, 
but you know clearly that's that's stated at, at right away like this is what you're getting into yeah. so you we know that um and the other girl that i was working with was starting to get like really hangry mm -hmm. um because she didn't eat, eat breakfast yeah. or whatever so it's like i think like 1 p.m at this time we're literally about to do the scene we'll be done in 35 minutes and then she could eat she th threw a tantrum um and so we ended up like stopping everything we didn't do the scene yet she uber eats uh like some food for herself mm -hmm. waited the food came she ate and then after 15 minutes she was like okay i think i'm good in my mind i'm like no you're not like yeah i used to work in nursing and I'm, I'm i'm aware of the digestive track <laughs> and i'm like there's no way <laughs> like yeah. there's no way but okay whatever maybe maybe her body's different <laughs> and i also didn't want to upset this person anymore so i was just yeah. like okay sometimes you just gotta do it just like yeah yep it's, be super like take one for the team yeah. that's basically what was happening there so <laughs> um i said all right let's go ahead then so we started the scene we were 10 minutes into the blowjob and you know the sloppy going back and forth deep throating you know i didn't grab her head at all or anything because i didn't know how far down she could go um, so she was doing it herself and I heard her like make a burping sound. So I thought like, oh, she's burping. Cause people do that all the time. Yeah. Um, but she actually was starting to throw up. So while she was pulling her head off of the cock, she projectile vomited all over and it went literally <sighs> like <laughs> we were sitting basically like leg to leg, like on our knees right next to one another. It went all over my lap. <laughs> like literally all over my entire lap <laughs> and the smell of it because she had mexican food the smell of it was horrendous so then, so, so then she just kept going and didn't do anything or say anything and I, and I was just so grossed out but i was like okay i was fine so i i put my hand out and i like did the open hand signal and went like this like um like hey you know i motioned to like give me something so the PA handed me a bunch of baby wipes because um, everything's POV. So they can't see what I'm doing with yeah. my hands. It was like a sideways POV. So I grabbed the baby wipes and I literally just went like and just wiped the, the big pile yeah. and pushed it further away from me. And I was like, I'll clean it up when I'm done and then just finished the rest of the scene. But oh, my God, oh, you're when, a trooper. I would have made them it cut. smelled so bad and i couldn't get the taste out of my mouth for like five hours because oh, yeah, the cause taste was still the dick after she <laughs> yeah. i was just like yeah. oh my god what mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. so yeah I cut. I yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i totally understand the vomiting with food and all that yeah it was it was brutal i was like eh. i don't think i ate mexican food for like a few months yeah, after that I, <laughs> I was like oh god Oof. um I wouldn't oh. even do that with my own throw up and you're doing like, you did it Right? It just, I don't mind the throw up mm -hmm. that is um, like mostly really fluid. like phlegmy and like a, a little thick, but like it's clear. Yeah, I know. I don't mean. mind that. That's it's, happened to me before, like on an empty stomach yeah. where I've gone a little bit too far. Yeah. And, but like then I just, that I have just been yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to like slurp this up. And it doesn't taste bad. It like, doesn't. That it is just, just tastes like a bunch of my spit, which is weird. And maybe yeah. a tiny bit of bile. You're like, this is really good. <laughs> but the best, ladies and gentlemen, that keeps you really wet is Feels by Kenzie Taylor. You can get my water-based lube at feelsbykenzie.com. It's good stuff. It is good. I used it in my butt. You did? <laughs> I love that. Uh, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your rating of Feels by Kenzie? I would say it was like an 8. It stayed yeah. pretty... It stayed pretty... Okay, I'm picky for my butt lube. Yeah, no, um, so am I. And so I, like, I need something that like stays really moist, and that was really great love that and there's no yeah. taste i did not taste it but yeah. i oh, love I mean, that i, guess I did I yeah there's no my taste or off of my, off the my favorite my, my favorite thing about it other than the fact it doesn't clump up mm -hmm. is that there's no taste like yeah. i can't stress that enough I it's incredible i hate when i go to suck someone's dick and they put lube on it and it tastes like very synthetic chemicals you're yes. like, <laughs> I'm like oh, yeah okay. <laughs> Uh, what would you say is um, a common myth about the adult film industry that you've heard and since being in it, you've realized like that's not true at all? Um, 
that we're all dumb and we're all being extorted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Shh, don't tell anybody no i'm just kidding yeah actually we're, we're all really stupid porn um girls and none of us actually want to be doing this. i i hate my job please no one book me anymore yeah, yeah. please oh man i have to have sex with a hot girl what oh my god that's my favorite it's terrible my job. It's like, yeah <laughs> don't get me wrong i love i love working with men but when i get booked mm. with a with a very hot woman i'm like yeah Oh, I love my life. Yeah, yeah. I love BGGs, honestly, because then I get like the best of both. Yes. Wow. You know or, what's, what? Were you gonna uh, say? I was just going to ask you if you had to choose one scene that you had to do, mm-hmm. and that was the only scene you could do for the rest of your career, what would it be? Okay, from like a business standpoint, I would say probably boy girl, just because that sells the most. But. From like a pleasure standpoint, <laughs> like probably shoots with trans girls because then I get like hot boobs and a penis and they're so, yes. yeah, it's. Oh, <laughs> love them. Love my trans girls. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my ladies. Uh, yeah, that's, that's hot. Yeah. So I would say the same thing. I would say, you know, either sex with a uh, trans woman as well mm-hmm. or a boy girl girl anal so that way uh-huh. you do pussy ass and you have another lady yeah and you have a guy yeah. so you're right i should have included anal in my <laughs> <laughs> that's okay actually most of my scenes with trans girls have actually ended up being like girl girl anal scenes which is interesting because not a lot of those are filmed yeah yeah I like that it. is interesting yeah huh. i have like two or three of them have have you ever um topped anyone with a with a strap on or pegged them? Not on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Not on camera. Coming soon. Um, Maya Wolf pegs Kenzie Taylor. Oh, <laughs> I actually I did a live show with a strap on actually, but that would be really fun. Yeah, <laughs> to come yeah. Come back to what you yeah. said. Yeah, please. Um, <laughs> I'm really good with a strap on. Um, I s- first started using strap ons when I worked like in a fetish dungeon. Love that. I was like, wow, this is fun. I feel powerful. <laughs> is that what you were doing before you were in the indus- industry for mm-hmm. uh, work? Yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, I, I've always had, like, I've done sex work since I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the times I had, like, a vanilla job, too, and a sex work job. But, yeah, I was working at a weed shop and a fetish dungeon right before I got into porn. Interesting. Yeah. How old are you? 26. 26? Yeah. You're very wise for your age. Thank you. <laughs> I've had a lot of growing up <laughs> yeah in a short amount of time I get that for sure <laughs> well I have a few fan questions if you're up for answering fan questions <laughs> so I'll share the person's um user handle from Instagram and then I'll read you their question okay so at Carrie Cheer mm-hmm. where do you see yourself in five years time in your career and in your personal life? Where do I see myself in five years' time? Um, in my career, probably at that point, I think I'll be directing um, shoots for sure. And, yeah, just, like, doing that and, like, working on features still. I love working on features. I'll probably have written some at that point, too. I actually just wrote my first script that's going to be produced two days ago <laughs> that's awesome yeah, that's excited. really do you like writing uh yeah i'm a that's writer awesome. um i mostly write poetry but i started like trying my hand at writing screenplays about like a year and a half ago or so love yeah. that <laughs> um so yeah like definitely like venturing into the production side of everything and like building my own brand and like releasing my own scenes too um and then like in my personal life i'm an artist so just continuing to like develop those skills and maybe at some point share my art and sell it who knows <laughs> I love that yeah I think it's important to have you know goals and hopes and yeah. dreams some people are like it's cliche <laughs> but that's beautiful at the beginning of every year I have this like giant sketchbook that I use and I'll like write in 2022 or 2023 I've done it for the last three years and this one's like in 2023 I will and it's like a list of everything that I would like to accomplish this year. That's awesome. So after you do each thing, do you mark it off? I, yeah. <laughs> so for the last two years, because mm-hmm. you said three years now. So for the last two years, yeah. 
have you crossed off everything both those years? I have not crossed everything off. And I didn't really expect to. Like, some yeah. of the things I wrote, like, when I first got into the industry. And I was like, I'm going to get a magazine cover this year. <laughs> and, like, those things didn't happen. But the fact that I, like, put that out there, like, I don't know. I believe a lot in manif- manifestation. So do I. So I feel like the more you put them out there and, like, the more you, like, see that because I hang them up on my walls like mm-hmm. I put them somewhere where I'm going to see it all the time like right now I have one on there that says learn a l- new language and that's been on my thing for three years and I just started taking French lessons two weeks ago love that so I don't feel bonjour thank you <laughs> <laughs> um bonjour comment ça va yeah, love that <laughs> um I speak an angry French because yeah. I have two Frenchies and I do a voice for one of my dogs but that's for a different day. I actually saw your clip with Ricky talking about that. <laughs> he, I was like, was that good? He, he was said, like, no. no. <laughs> He's yeah. always like, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> you were actually um, and the star in his movie that won movie of the year, it Grinders. Was. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah? yeah. How was your experience with that? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's actually... One of, one of the, the questions. questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's one of the questions from Patrice Syrah XO. What was your favorite part for the movie Grinders? Um, so I'm guessing what she meant by that is what was your favorite you know, part as in like what you did mm-hmm. throughout that movie? Because obviously it's a feature movie. So there yeah. were so many things you did. Yeah. Um, I would have to say there was this part in the movie where we filmed like a party scene and when we were filming it there was like a ton of extras there because it was a party and I was just looking around and the energy between everyone on set was like so cool and like you could tell everybody wanted to be there and was excited to be working on the project and I don't know I really felt like the love between because a lot of these people are my friends like people I love and care for yeah and you could just like feel that between all of us that we had been working on the project for you know I think I don't remember how many days we worked on that quite a few yeah so we'd all been spending like 12 hour days together yeah and I think it was the last day of the shoot and it's just good energy between everyone I love to be around people who are excited about like being there it just yeah. feels good to be around people who actually like want to do the thing because sometimes that's not always the case it's so true like, sometimes you I show love up that. and people like don't want to be there and like it just it, makes you f- like it's like a weird feeling receiving that from someone because it's, it's like, kind of like an energy vampire yeah or not like that but also it's like okay well i mean we have to have sex so like if you don't want to <laughs> be here it's making me feel like yeah. this isn't very consensual like i know you're a consenting adult yeah but it doesn't make me want to touch you it's like working with a girl who doesn't like girls like yeah you don't want me doing this to you so it makes me not want to do it to you yeah i've shared about that before on here but i've had encounters with girls where they'll be like before the scene all right so i don't really like kissing don't finger me um don't use any toys um <laughs> i swear to god i cannot make this shit up um and uh, i'm i don't i'm not gonna come like i'm just not going to i'm not into girls at all so i don't know let's just see where this goes and I, and i'm sitting there like uh, uh cool. Glad we i don't know what to do with today. my hands what do i do with my hands <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. so at that point i just think of like another like hot girl <laughs> in my mind and i envision i'm like yeah she wants me (laughs) like that's that's what i do to get through a girl saying like she doesn't like girls i'm like yep she wants me so bad (laughs) she's enjoying this yeah she loves this shit dude (laughs) it's so funny but yeah either way i always say to someone i'm like even if you're not into this and you know as long as you're consenting Mm -hmm. like for the next 45 minutes of this sex scene we're in love like you're mine and i'm yours and we're gonna just fucking dance the night away yes we're dancing meaning (laughs) fucking but still like (laughs) that's the way i look at it like that's how you draw a good performance for the most part is that is the only thing that matters is the chemistry with that person Mm -hmm. and then obviously good vibes on set help but yeah yeah any (laughs) hooser so what has been your 
because you said you love features and acting. What has been your favorite role that you've done so far? Was it the one in Grinders, or is there a different movie? Um, selfishly, I'm going to say it was the feature I was the very lead in. Yeah. <laughs> which was also the very first one I got to do, which That's was awesome. really exciting. And it was with Casey Calvert, who is my good friend and mentor. Mm-hmm. It was a couple months into my... Uh, career actually i just got a reminder it was like two years ago today and it was a picture of us on set <laughs> love that um so it was really cool for her to like take that chance on you know putting that amount of trust on me being such a new performer because you know features they are a lot of days of filming so if the person isn't reliable that's really problematic yeah <laughs> um what was the name of the movie it's called spark okay yeah. and uh who is that for less cinema got it yeah but also, the one we did going up, I think, was probably my best performance I've given so far. You did incredible on that. Thank you. I watched that. Cause, Thank you. I mean, I, I like to watch movies that my husband acts in, like, mm-hmm. like feature movies, because yeah. I just like to be supportive, but also I just like yeah. to see his acting. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, definitely, i seen your performance. And I already told you this in person prior, mm-hmm. but I was like, this girl's going to kill it. <laughs> Thank and you. you did kill on that. <laughs> and also, going up one movie of the year at Expos, is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So Congrats to everyone for that um, that was on the cast and the crew. And Casey, man. She had she a hell of a year. Yeah. yeah. She, she deserves it. Yeah. She's so She's talented. badass. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Hmm. I have, let's see. Push. Same person. <laughs> what other projects are you looking forward to? So I just found out (coughs) that this year I will be going to uh, Paris and Ibiza and London to shoot. um, Dorsel does one like really big feature every year. Mm -hmm. And so I will be the lead in that this year. That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Very, very excited. That is huge. Is that part of the reason why you want to learn French as that well? That is why I'm learning French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or why you are. I, I, <laughs> yeah. haven't, I want to surprise them and show yeah. up and be like, guys, I speak a little French She doesn't now. know any French. No, <laughs> well, last time I went actually there and met them, worked with them last j- July, and I, I didn't know any French. And they're like, the talent um, liaison, she's so sweet. She's like, Maya, you have to learn French. And so now that they're bringing me back, I'm like, I'm going to show up this time and like be able to speak a little <laughs> French to them. <laughs> You're just like speaking it fluently. They're like, who is this girl? <laughs> they ask you to move there and <laughs> buy you a beret. <laughs> now that's awesome. Dorsell's stuff is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, really I I have no idea what their budget is, but mm-hmm. they're uh, whenever they do a big like feature movie like that, it looks incredible. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for you. That is a big deal, <laughs> very big deal. Yeah, I'm stoked. Actually, that's the company that I wrote the script for the other day, Storsell. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool that you're into writing because not a lot of people um, want to take the time to do so, or they're not really interested in it. It's mm-hmm. actually really hard to find writers yeah. in our industry. Hmm. I, I mean, I mostly, like I said, write poetry, but the the stories that I write, like, they just come to me so quickly. Like, um, I see one thing, and then it kind of just, like, starts to build a story out from there. And so it feels like I can't type it down fast enough in, like, screenplay format to get yeah. it out on the page. Um, I don't know. It just comes really easy to me. Maybe it's, like, all of the scenes I've done and all of the, like, I'm really into film and television, so I've watched, like, so much. And now it's just, like, all the pieces kind of... And I'm a pervert, too. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> I think of these sexy scenarios, and I'm like, mm, so much make this <laughs> also too if you know you're into to film and everything mm-hmm. and television and you're d- seeing all these different things yeah. there's so many things that could be made into porn yeah not saying parody per se mm-hmm. but kind of scenarios that scenarios yeah or you can like twist something. it up yeah. and yeah Absolutely. so stuff like that is there uh, you said you like poetry is mm-hmm. there a poem that you've wrote that comes to mind that means a lot to you yeah 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 would you like to say it or read it yes (laughs) so i have um an anthology i'm writing called looking glass um and it's about how everything we've ever experienced uh forms this viewing glass and looking glass in which we see the world Mm -hmm. um and so that's the poem i'm going to read you is um, awesome poem that the book is based off of well i'm going to buy this book when does it come (laughs) out I haven't even heard the poem yet. And I'm like, I'm buying this book. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. 
going to take me a second. <laughs> it's okay. So in the meantime, mm-hmm. I'm just going to ramble to everybody. So how awesome is Maya so far? On a scale of 1 to 10. Stop. I'll tell you, a 10. <laughs> I'm rambling because she's pulling, pulling up a poem. Um, she's pulling up a poem. Up a poem. <laughs> she's pulling a poem. I'm trying to find it in my little, uh, I have a little, what is it called? An index of all the poems. Oh, yeah. I'm sure if you write a lot, it's probably uh, hard sometimes to oh go God. back through and find everything. I have hundreds of poems, and some wow. of them are just like written on like little scraps of paper so I'll did you go to them. school for writing i did not no, no i never received any formal education past um high school i never i knew that i wasn't going to the yeah. other day i was on set and someone <laughs> was like what did you get on the sats or something like that because i was being a smart ass um and i was like i don't know i never took them i i knew i wasn't gonna go to college so i never really saw the point in it yeah yeah do you ever think about it now going um or are you more along the lines of kind of learning as you go how you've been doing yeah yeah so I think now we live in a world where the like resources to learn things are so abundant um that we don't necessarily need to pay these institutions like absurd amounts of money to I teach agree. us things um so and I like to learn I learn I teach myself things a lot or like find ways to learn things um, mm-hmm. so I don't know maybe if I ever feel like there's something I can't learn somewhere else, then I will turn to an institution. But I don't know. The way I see it now is they're not as necessary as they used to be. Yeah. yeah. No, I actually was just having this conversation recently with my mom because my baby sister is about to start college. Mm-hmm. And um, I said to her, she can literally just do master classes yeah. on whatever she wants because mm-hmm. um, she wants to... I know one of the things she wants to do is be like a pro makeup artist. She's yeah. already amazing at makeup. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there was something else. Oh, photography. Yeah. She wants to be a photographer. The photography masterclass is phenomenal. Yeah. I so I was just telling my mom, she doesn't need to like spend years of her life going to a college mm-hmm. for these things. And a lot of the times they make you do courses that don't have anything to like prerequisites. Yeah. That don't have anything to do with what you're trying to achieve. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Thank so you. It, it doesn't make sense. God, that mom. You spend all of this money. <laughs> yeah. I went to, to like, school for four years for fucking nothing. Yeah. I don't even use my degree. And a like you said, don't. the prereq classes, none of them. Like, hello, mm-hmm. art class isn't helping me now. Yeah. Like trigonometry is not helping me <laughs> like yeah it's i don't know i found my poem okay <laughs> perfect okay okay now it's the serious time poem time poem. i don't know what it calls you <laughs> <laughs> the, the the free-flowing <laughs> fun poem time <laughs> okay looking glass i am a summary of everything i have ever experienced these experiences shape my perception forming a looking glass through which i see the world I have had experiences that clouded this glass, jading my experience. In order to perceive a world more clearly, I let go, releasing hate, anger, sadness, and skepticism, freeing myself. That's deep. Yeah, thanks. Do you feel like that represents where you're at in your life today? Um, so I wrote a lot of this when I was 21 years old or 22. Mm-hmm. And so in retrospect, I look and read some of these things and I think they're kind of cringy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so when it says, you know, I have like freed myself from those things is at that time, you know, I thought I'd really healed myself from everything. Don't we all when we're 21? (laughs) But now, you know, as I've gotten older and wiser, I realize that like, you know, those things do still affect me, even though I've like grown past them being like the be all end all like, Mm -hmm. so I've actually for this book, um, I was talking to a friend of mine about it, Gustavo Turner. Mm hmm. Um, Shout out to Gustavo. (laughs) (laughs) And I was telling him about my book and how I read it. And sometimes I'm like, "Eh." he told me that there was this writer who kind of had the same experience, but he was signed to a publishing company. So he had to release a certain amount of books in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so what he did is he wrote responses to some of the poems on opposite pages. And so I think uh, that is going to be something that I do as well. Nice. So response meaning where where you were at uh, at that time mm-hmm. mentally, like when when creating that certain poem. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. That's super deep because 
I've never read a book where someone does that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I actually purchased that book, and I it's on the way, so I want to read that soon. Yeah, that's really cool. But yeah, I I was going back and reading it at one point, and like fixing things or like deleting them, and I was like, well, just because I don't feel this way anymore doesn't mean that those feelings weren't valid at the time, and it wasn't something that I thought was an actuality. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think it'll be a good way to show that like growth and things I like love that, that. Yeah. so um would you say that you know doing sorry I'm like slouching <laughs> would you say that doing these poems is a, a form of like meditation or just taking care of yourself li- with your mental like health semi-therapeutic yeah, yeah. especially because a lot of them are about things I've struggled with or like uh obstacles I've dealt with in my life mm-hmm. the actual act the book itself looking glasses um essentially a series of poems about my life and all the things that I experienced. Um, I like that. That's, that is very courageous of you to put your own self out there and be vulnerable with the world or, you know, whoever comes across your book when it's, when it's published, because it's going to get published. I'm putting it out there. (laughs) I will be relentless it will be published yeah no will be for sure (laughs) but um yeah i i have experienced a lot of things that um are really hard to overcome and i think that if i put this book out there and people see like oh things can get better Mm -hmm. like maybe that'll help people yeah (laughs) fingers Uh, crossed i i really i i like that a lot i'm a huge advocate for mental health stuff um I also suffer with anxiety and depression and stuff. And I'm very open about that as well as, you know, being in recovery from drugs and alcohol. But the reason why I bring that up is, you know, talking about doing therapeutic things and taking care of yourself mentally. I think it's so important. And the fact that you're able to be vulnerable with tons of other, I mean, I mean, millions of other people (laughs) (laughs) when this is published uh, and share how you said you're going to do responses. So, things that you have overcome or been through you're sharing all of those things Mm -hmm. that's incredible like honestly (laughs) it's super inspiring thank you yeah i'm also starting to illustrate the book myself as well really that's cool some of the poems there will be like little illustrations that match with them so do you like to draw or paint both yeah Yeah. that's cool i took a painting class Mm -hmm. um with my husband and it was funny yeah because (laughs) i'm not good at painting but Mm. it was so much fun yeah basically it was like 10 adults um Mm. it was like a wine and paint thing or whatever but obviously we weren't drinking but um there was a person in front the teacher or whatever and they were like okay follow this and do this and Mm -hmm. do this and by the end of it we had like a (laughs) sunset with some birds and i can't remember (laughs) what else i think maybe there was the ocean or something it was it was cool, but it was funny to see like the difference in everybody's paintings mm-hmm. just by following that one person. Mm-hmm. Like how everybody every different person interprets the one instruction. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's little moments like that that you have those, you know, realization moments in your own life of the, the clarity of seeing like how different each individual is mm-hmm. and how we all think differently, mm-hmm. act differently, you know, conduct our our lives differently the knowledge that we have yeah. the way that we feel our feelings yeah. i mean that goes back to like the idea of the looking glass yeah everything you know and it really is like everything that we've ever experienced just it shapes how we view the world like it shapes what we see it shapes how we react to what people have like how mm-hmm. pe- you know like, mm-hmm. it's crazy <laughs> and how you said too about um there were there were things that you've been through that you thought you were over at one point and you didn't realize they're affecting you later in mm-hmm. life. That happens a lot. I mean, that even happens with people in our industry. Um, you know, things childhood trauma. Yeah. You know, things that have happened to them when they were younger, and it affects them now later in life yeah. by just the way that they might react to things. Yeah. And it's and it's not that they're doing it on purpose. It's more of a defense mechanism. It's ingrained in them. Exactly. Yeah. It's so how they feel. They keep themselves safe. Exactly. Because they've had to keep themselves safe from something. Or they had a time when they were violated and they weren't able to. Definitely. Yeah. I feel like you've done a master class on being a therapist. <laughs> you so, you're so intelligent, honestly. 
Thank you. I actually thought about doing therapy at one point. Really? Yeah, I think I would want to do it for like sex workers in specific because I think that's something that's really lacking for us. I think so too. There's the pineapple support, but yeah. um, I'm not quite familiar with how many therapists they have or what exactly, mm -hmm. also, how accessible. I would like a therapist who's been a sex worker. Yes. Because I don't really think you can understand everything about being a sex worker if you haven't been one. Yes, I, I agree. That would be helpful. I my therapist is is not a sex worker. She's yeah. just a, a therapist, mm -hmm. just a doctor. But yeah, she's very open minded mm -hmm. and luckily non judgmental That's and all great. that stuff. But I was like straight out with her when I first started seeing mm -hmm. her. I was like, all right, listen, this is what I do porn. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I have been in a lot of porn scenes. I'm yeah. going to be in a lot more porn scenes. I direct gay porn. Um and yeah that's what i do so if that makes you uncomfortable we should just end this now. yeah this it's not gonna work out but i wanted to lay that out right away not to be like oh look at me yeah. i wanted to lay that out right away because if she's religious or if she had different beliefs or yeah. something she could state like oh, yeah this won't work yeah yeah <laughs> or like oh i don't like that because yeah. i don't want to have a therapist that's judgmental yeah, or negative why would you why yeah. would you pay someone to <laughs> money to make you feel bad? believe it or not i've heard of people doing that they're yeah. like yeah my therapist tells me all the time to quit my job but i don't uh -huh. want to i'm like if my you therapist ever was yeah, yeah if my therapist is like quit your job i'd be like why don't you yeah, quit yours because clearly you're not doing it very yeah. well exactly <laughs> but yeah that if i were to ever go to school it would probably be for that love that so i guess you could say you're a huge advocate for mental health as well yeah i like you said i i do like to i i think mental health is something that's very like taboo and like swept under the rug in american mm -hmm. culture and i think that leads to a lot of people feeling like really alone in that when yeah. i think a lot more people are struggling with it than we let on you know what's really crazy i did um i did a uh it was it was kind of intentional, but kind of not. Um, so I did a post um, about, uh, I think this was like a year and a half ago when I was at a really low point emotionally in my life. And it was just a very open post. I put it on Instagram and it was um, just to shed light on like being suicidal mm -hmm. and like getting through to the other side and like not giving up no matter yeah. what. And stuff like that. And basically trying to like let people know like, hey, you're not, alone. you're not alone. I know how you feel. Like, I love you. I'm here if you need someone to talk to. Because not everyone has anyone. Yeah. Um, so I did that. And it was literally just a post basically to, you know, be like, I'm here. You're not alone. Yeah. It got like 400 likes. But then, you know. Two weeks later, I post a photo in a bikini and it has like 10,000 likes. Yeah. Like that's just an example of like how swept under the rug things are. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay. So a post about, hey, I was just suicidal for months and then a bikini post, like uh, those don't even yeah. compare. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the bikini post will never exist if I die. Like it just doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I thought that that was insane. Yeah. But that just goes to show you. Yeah, I think a big part of that is um, we are seen as a form of escapism being porn stars. Yeah. And so reminding people of our, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I don't want to say reality, but like our humanity. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Christian. <laughs> reminding people of our humanity and like, hey, I struggle too sometimes and people are like, oh, no, 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 no. I came to you because you're supposed to make me feel better. Yeah. You are a dispenser for my endorphins. That's mm -hmm. what your porn is to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that makes me think of times when, um, you know, you were just at AVN and, you know, X3 and stuff. So you see fans and they come up to you and sometimes they might ask you questions off the wall things or they might just automatically think it's okay to grab your butt or yeah. grab your boobs or mm -hmm. try to swipe their hand in between your legs when you're taking a photo yeah. and just stuff like that and I'm like whoa 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 what are you doing oh well it's fine you, you're a yeah yeah you like that don't you I'm like no. uh 
no, actually, I don't like that. Get your hand off me. Yeah. So it's stuff like that where it's like, whoa. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was go-go dancing, actually, the last time I go-go danced. And this girl touched my pussy, like moved my underwear. I had like two or three pairs of underwear and she moved both of them and touched my pussy. I was like, you are a woman. Wow. Like Ballsy. How do you not realize like... Like, don't you, <laughs> you like, yeah. I don't know, it just, like, blew my mind. Like, I would have expected that from a man, but from, like, another woman to, like, violate my consent like that. I was like, damn, for sure, I see you. Yeah. You're like, um, okay. And she's, like, giving me dollars. She's like, don't you want my money? And I was like, I want to punch you in the fucking face, but <laughs> I want to do. That's, I think that's <laughs> one of the most degrading things. Okay, this happens more with my men customers when yeah. it comes to dancing women i don't really have this issue women are like throwing money like crazy yeah. but the guys they have two dollars one dollar in their hand and they think they're just gonna get like this whole experience and show and i'm like <laughs> that's a dollar like i just traveled across the country <laughs> like i'm sorry but like i'm gonna pay you you know a little bit of time and yeah. keep it moving like <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm here to work. Like, I'm yeah, not here for story. fucking my own free will. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it is free will, but you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, you're there to make money, you know? Yeah. Like, hello. I, one of the first times I danced in L.A., had someone offer me, like, $16 to give them a hand job. Like, <laughs> you're like, $16? It was like, my shoes cost more than $16, <laughs> sir. What is this, the Walmart rollback <laughs> special? The fuck? He's like, it's fine, it's fine. And I was like, it's not fine. I would be like, you know what you can get for $16? McDonald's. Now get the fuck out of here. And at that time, I was doing, like, fetish work, too. So people were paying me, like, hundreds of dollars to, like, my fucking shoes. And I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, absolutely not, <laughs> sir. You know what you can do? Unlace my shoes for me so I can take them off for $16. Thank you. <laughs> I was just, like, astonished. I was like, does anyone say? I mean, I'm sure there are, because, like, you know, survival sex work is a thing. Like, I started sex work when I was a survival sex work. I did yeah. things for a lot less money than I would ever do now. But, like, I was just like, you picked the wrong one. <laughs> kind of makes me think, you know, the... The phrase you live and you learn and not to have regrets. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. yes, you did those things, but where you are today, mm -hmm. you're not doing them. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, it made you a stronger person, mm -hmm. you know, mentally or physically mm -hmm. or all of the above. My skin today. Is so yeah. thick. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you could stab me. Uh, I won't feel a thing. <laughs> and it's like crazy because now I'm like so comfortable with like setting boundaries with people and like saying no to stuff and like just being firm in like what I think I deserve and like need and stuff like that. Whereas like back then when I was like 18, I was just like, mm, whatever's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fun and rainbows and butterflies. I just need money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, help me. <laughs> and now I'm like, mm, it's yeah. so nice. it's, I mean, I've been a sex worker for eight years, so, but like now it feels so good to be able to be like more selective about what I do. Cause you know, at one point, maybe I would have taken that $16, which mm -hmm. is, that sucks. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, it makes you, f it, it starts to affect your self esteem and self worth. Oh, yeah. No, you know? absolutely. When I stopped sugary, <laughs> yeah. I told my boyfriend, we just started selling drugs together. Um, <laughs> I, I cried to him and I was like, I want to die. Like, I feel gross when I leave. Like, yeah. 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 And then I just started selling drugs. And stuff. But now look at you. Now look at me. We've come so far. You're the f uh, fucking leading actress in like movies <laughs> of the year. Okay. It's insane. Um, well, I have absolutely loved having you here. I have loved being here. I'm sorry I didn't ask you, you know. A bunch of questions off this list it's but okay. i feel like we, we talked about really important things yeah. you know um but i would love if you would share with everyone your social media handles and then you know any websites or projects you have coming up all of that stuff so my instagram and twitter at are both at maya wolf and my website is uh, mayasfans.com and for projects I have coming up, look out for my new work with Les Cinema and Dorsel. Awesome. 
You said Maya's fans? Yeah, Maya's fans. Mayasfans.com, you guys. And then follow her on Twitter and Instagram. And be sure to look out for Maya Wolf's work <laughs> for Less Cinema and Dorsell. Superstar over here. <laughs> and in the meantime, go check out Grinders and Going Up. Do Those it. are awesome. You won't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Kenzie Taylor, and this is Feels by Kenzie Taylor. It's a water-based lubricant, vegan, cruelty-free, silky smooth, tasteless, and you're always going to be wet. <laughs> you can pre-order now by going to feelsbykenzie.com. Order it now. What's the freakiest thing you've ever done? Um, eating pasta in bed. Not true. You look my like Oh, I did. Video. I did. But after I ate pasta in bed. Why was that so freaky? I don't know. It was a lot of sauce.